Hello and welcome to an internet video about a random hiking trail that you've probably never heard of that I will talk to you about today in a hope to persuade you to someday visit. My name is Miguel, I run a photography and videography channel about hiking, and I hope that you stick around to see this video. Now, I must say that I don't really know what I'm doing in regards to how to properly make this video or anything like that, but I hope that you'll stick around and watch as I try to figure it out. Now moving on to the trail. The trail that I want to talk to you all about today is a small hiking trail called Acorn Creek. It is located about 10 miles north of Silverthorne, Colorado, a small mountain town, really nice area. This trail came up because I really wanted to look for some fall colors. At the time that I went, it was early September, I believe it was September 7th to be exact, and I was in search for the fall colors. Now this trail is well known for two different things. In the spring, it's well known for its abundance of wildflowers, and in the fall, it's known for its many colorful aspen groves. Now, the trail itself is quite interesting. It's 7.3 miles long and has an elevation gain of about 2,700 feet. But that's not what makes it special. What makes it special is all the different things that you can view while hiking it. For those looking for a quick review on the trail, I would overall give it about a 7 out of 10. Overall, I would give the trail a pretty hard difficulty. The first half is quite easy, with very little incline and lots of opportunities for shade and rest. However, the second half of the trail gets a lot more difficult and a lot more technical. There are some points later on where the ground is so narrow and unstable that you have to pay a lot of attention to where you're placing your feet. Like I mentioned before, the trail features a lot of wildflowers and aspen groves. So if you're coming just to check out the wildflowers, I think this should be a pretty easy hike. There's a sign about halfway through the hike, which makes a good turnaround spot if you are just coming for the wildflowers. Otherwise, if you plan on making it all the way to the top, prepare for a rather challenging climb. As for the best time to do this hike, I would really recommend either in spring or early summer. Like I mentioned before, the trail is actually kind of small and a bit technical at times, so I wouldn't really go whenever there's a lot of snow on the trail, as it might be hard to follow. And at the same time, I wouldn't recommend going in late summer because of the amount of smoke and heat. Now, I personally did this hike in early September, almost a week ago now. I did that, like I said, because I wanted to go out and see all the different fall colors. Unfortunately, this did mean I had to put up with all the heat and the haze that comes with Colorado summers. That being said, we should probably move on to my personal hike experience. The first thing I noticed about this trail is how incredibly detailed it is. And by detailed, I mean messy. There's a lot of fallen over logs and wild grasses that are just scattered about. This makes for a really interesting hiking experience, as there's a lot of different things that you can look at and pay attention to. For the first few minutes of hiking, I spent a lot of my time just checking out all those small details, like all the different types of wild flowers that were scattered about. About 10 minutes into the hike, I came to the actual Acorn Creek. This is the only point in the hike that it is actually visible, and as you might notice, the water level is quite low. Moving out of this area of trees, we come to the first mixture of open meadow and those aspen groves. You'll notice here that there's a lot fewer trees, but that the wild grasses are really, really tall.
Now here at this meadow, I finally get a glimpse of that aspen grove that I've been looking forward to up in the mountains. You can see up there in the distance that it's really colorful. This is the benefit of coming in fall time. Now this sign here marks the halfway point. Up until this point, the hike has been pretty easy. Like I mentioned, gradual incline and plenty of shade. And I think that this area is pretty easy to get to. So I think almost anyone of any fitness level should be able to get out here with no problem. However, continuing on on further is where things start to become a bit more challenging. Right after this sign, there's a small climb up to a ridgeway, which isn't all too difficult, but should serve as a good indicator as whether or not one is up for continuing the hike. The view from this ridge is pretty nice. It follows that small climb that I just mentioned. After another five minutes of walking and cutting through another grove of trees, I finally reached this overlook. It provides an amazing view of the aspens that I saw from down below. Next up is this ridge. This ridge is about a third of a mile long. What makes it so difficult is that it contains a pretty decent climb. There's also no shade at this point. You may notice from my video footage here just how incredibly smoky it is. I think that this is probably the first point where you start to really notice just how incredibly bad the haze is. The view certainly is fantastic, but you can hardly see the mountain range out of the distance and that's only about 10 miles away. So I really wonder what it would be like if I was able to come on a day where there was far less smoke. I noticed here that this area of the trail was actually quite muddy, which was really unusual compared to how dry it had been earlier throughout the trail. And this is the only point in time when it's actually muddy like this. The rest of the trail is so dry in fact that it was actually difficult for me to come back down because it was hard to maintain traction on such a thin layer of dry dust. There is a huge payoff here. After about 30 minutes of climbing up this steep trail, we finally reached the Aspen Grove, which I've been looking forward to for the entirety of the hike. It's really exciting being able to reach a destination that you've been able to view from the very beginning. This part of the trail made the whole hike worth it in my opinion. I absolutely love the fall colors here in Colorado, and being able to be surrounded by such a massive Aspen Grove was truly jaw-dropping. Now you may notice that there's a bit of a jump in the video footage here. That's because prior to this clip, there was about 15 minutes of really steep climbing that I had to go through. So steep in fact that I wasn't able to take any video footage or take any photos. I'm not saying that the trail itself was like incredibly steep or anything, but as I mentioned before, the extreme dryness combined with all the gear that I was carrying made it really hard for me to properly maintain balance while climbing up this steep section. Thank you. 
I love this photo in particular because of all the tiny houses. Now you can see here by the sign that I've actually reached the end of this trail. To the right, it shows that I can climb further up to the top of the U trailhead. And I actually did try doing this. The only problem was the trail is so poorly maintained and so erratic that I wasn't able to follow it properly. I did try going back and forth for about 15 minutes retracing my steps, just trying to figure out where to go to next. The trail ended up taking me about two and a half hours to get to the top and then about another hour and a half to get back down, making just over four hours total for the round trip. Now this is taking in all the time that I spent collecting videos and photos, and I was also carrying additional weight because of all my camera gear. So I think that if someone was doing just the hiking and was moving at about the same pace that I was, they could probably get this hike done in about three hours. Well, that's all that I have for you regarding this trail. Just some videos and just a couple of photos. Normally I do quite a bit more photography than this, especially whenever I go out hiking in such a beautiful location, but I was really concerned about how well I was able to do the video, and as a result didn't take nearly as many photos as I normally do. I do plan on making more videos about my hikes in the future, and I have another one planned already. That's all that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Miguel, talking about the Colorado skyline, and I will see you all again later.